Spider-Man has faced nearly every member of his rogues gallery during his cinematic adventures, but there are still a few villains who have yet to make their silver screen debut. From killer goblins to monstrous vampires to, um, swarms of bees, these are a few of those villains. Kraven the Hunter is by far the most infamous Spider-Man villain to have never featured in a live-action movie. Otherwise known as Sergei Kravenov, this obsessive big-game hunter first appeared all the way back in 1964's Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 15. In this story, Kraven is hired by his friend Chameleon to bring down Spider-Man. Inevitably, the hunter quickly becomes the prey, and Spider-Man has Kraven both arrested and deported. This would mark the beginning of a long and storied criminal career for Sergei Kravenov, who has devoted his entire existence to besting Spider-Man once and for all. Considering Kraven is such a prominent member of Spider-Man's rogues gallery, it'll come as no surprise to find that fans have been clamoring for him to show up on screen for many years. And he's come pretty close, too. In 2021, Tom Holland even told Collider that Spider-Man No Way Home director John Watts originally intended for the third MCU Spidey movie to feature Kraven as the main antagonist. And now, it seems that Kraven is finally about to step into the spotlight. A solo film set within Sony's Spider-Man universe has been on the cards for a while now, and in 2021, Deadline reported that Avengers Age of Ultron star Aaron Taylor Johnson had been cast as the notorious Hunter himself. You didn't see that coming? Should all go to plan, Kraven the Hunter will land in theaters on January 13, 2023. Goblin villains will be very familiar to fans of the Spider-Man movies. Willem Dafoe made comic book movie history as Norman Osborn's Green Goblin in the original Spider-Man, while James Franco played Harry Osborn in Sam Raimi's trilogy, taking the mantle of New Goblin in Spider-Man 3. Similarly, Dane DeHaan played a goblin-crazed Harry Osborn in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. In the comics, however, there are far more goblins than the Green Goblin, and many more people have taken the mantle than Norman and Harry Osborn. Perhaps the second most well-known of these is the villain known as the Hobgoblin. Six people have operated under that name over the years, but the deadliest of all is Roderick Kingsley. Debuting as the masked villain in 1983's Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 238, Kingsley is a billionaire fashion designer who enters the criminal underworld after acquiring and altering Norman Osborn's goblin formula. It's probably fair to say that audiences are probably over the Green Goblin by now, despite Willem Dafoe's dramatic return in Spider-Man No Way Home. Nevertheless, the Hobgoblin's movie debut could provide a refreshing twist on a fan-favorite villain. Otherwise known as The Spot, Jonathan Owen first appeared in 1985's Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 98. A scientist in the employ of Kingpin, Owen creates a strange black portal while attempting to recreate the powers of the vigilante hero, Cloak. It soon becomes clear that Owen has gained the ability to open these portals and traverse physical space via the so-called Spot World. Owen subsequently names himself The Spot and embarks upon a criminal career. The Spot's unique costume and strange abilities make him a more visually arresting villain than most. Suitably, he's featured in a number of stories beyond the comic book universe, including Spider-Man the Animated Series and the 2017 Spider-Man show. It's possible he'll be popping up on the silver screen sometime soon, too, as, according to Murphy's Multiverse, the Spot could be a key baddie in the upcoming animated sequel, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This could literally not get any weirder. Since the comic book version of Own is a close ally of Kingpin, who was the main antagonist in Into the Spider-Verse, it's easy to see how he might fit into Miles Morales' story and how the Spot's interdimensional powers could provide an intriguing slant on the original movie's multiversal antics. The Inheritors are a team of supervillains best known for their role in the original Spider-Verse story arc and its follow-up, Spider-Geddon. Each member of this clan of totem-hunting vampires has dedicated their life to hunting down spider people across the multiverse and consuming their essences. A number of inheritors have battled Spider-Man and his other selves, but the two most prominent are Morlin and Karn. Morlin is arguably the deadliest and scariest member of the Inheritors, having killed and consumed a whole heap of spider people during his so-called Great Hunt. Karn, meanwhile, is living in exile during his first appearance. After he hesitated on a mission to capture the Master Weaver, who controls the all-powerful web of life and destiny, Karn's mother was struck down and killed. As a result, 
Karn was exiled until he could prove his return, a task he attempts to accomplish throughout the first Spider-Verse storyline. As the main antagonists of the comic book version of Spider-Verse, it seems strange that the Inheritors had nothing to do with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Still, with two follow-ups planned for that movie, who knows what the future has in store for these dimension-hopping ghouls. Silver Sable is one of those Spider-Man characters who can act as an ally or an enemy of the wall crawler, depending on what each story requires. Born Sylvia Sablinova, this highly skilled mercenary was introduced in 1985's Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 265, in which she leads the vigilante team of soldiers known as the Wild Pack. Although she has collaborated with a number of superheroes over the years, including Spider-Man, Silver Sable has still played the role of antagonist every now and then. Although Sablinova has yet to star in a Spider-Man movie, the character was once destined for the big screen. In 2017, Sony announced that production had begun on Silver and Black, a feature film following the adventures of Sable and Black Cat, another morally ambiguous Spider-Man friend and foe. Sadly, the project wasn't destined to last, and director Gina Prince Bythewood eventually revealed that Sony were considering offering the story to Disney+, having previously decided to give each character their own movie project. A few months later, Prince Bythewood told Looper that she'd been preoccupied with her work on the Netflix movie The Old Guard, but that she was planning to re-engage with the Silver Sable and Black Cat project at some point. Still, Marvel fans shouldn't expect to see Sable gracing the silver screen in the near future. The villain known as Mr. Negative is a more recent addition to Spider-Man's rogues gallery, first hitting the page in 2007's Free Comic Book Day, The Amazing Spider-Man. His true name isn't known, but the man who became Mr. Negative was once a Chinese gangster, captured by the crime boss Silvermane and forced to undergo an experimental drug procedure. This process gave him control over the Light Force and Dark Force two forms of extra-dimensional energy that are more commonly wielded by mutants and magic users. The experiment also split the gangster's mind into two, forming the Martin Lee persona, a philanthropist who works with the homeless, as well as Mr. Negative himself, the evil crime lord at the head of the Inner Demon's street gang. Mr. Negative has played a prominent role in Spider-Man's stories in recent years, but one of his most famous occurs in the Marvel's Spider-Man video game, in which he wages a war against Kingpin and Norman Osborn for control of New York. What are you doing to me? Giving you a new perspective. Obviously, Mr. Negative isn't exactly a stalwart of the live-action Spider-Man movies, but his homeless charity, Feast, appears in Spider-Man No Way Home. So never say never. Despite being nowhere near as well-known as Spider-Man's A-list villains, the Jackal is actually one of Peter Parker's oldest foes. In 1965, The Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 31, introduced readers to Miles Warren a professor at Empire State University who develops a desperate infatuation with the student, Gwen Stacy. After Stacy is killed by the Green Goblin, Warren blames Spider-Man for her death, adopting the Jackal alter ego in order to get his revenge. The Jackal's true identity was actually something of a twist in the original comic books. His villainous persona didn't emerge until 1974's The Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 129 with his true identity revealed a year later in number 148. In subsequent years, the Jackal has fought Spider-Man on a number of occasions, but his most notable contribution is the creation of clone copies of Spider-Man, such as Ben Riley, who eventually became the Jackal himself. As such, the Jackal has taken on a starring role in some of Spider-Man's most famous and infamous storylines, including the Clone Saga and Spider-Island. Here's a pitch for you. An Australian with a knack for hurling boomerangs dons a goofy costume and turns to a life of crime, joining up with several supervillain teams in the process. Think you've heard this one before? Well, this isn't actually the origin of DC's Captain Boomerang, or at least it's not just the origin of DC's Captain Boomerang. This is the story of Frederick Myers, aka Boomerang. DC's take on a boomerang-wielding criminal preceded Marvel's by six years, with the latter hitting the scene in 1966's Tales to Astonish Volume 1, number 81. 
And it's also probably fair to say that Marvel's Boomerang is far less renowned than his distinguished competitor. Myers is an ex-professional baseball player, known for his strong pitching arm, who was drafted into the employ of the Hydra-adjacent group known as the Secret Empire. His new taskmasters outfitted him with special weapons and conferred upon him the codename Boomerang, more as a joke than anything else. After the end of the Empire, Myers decides to become a freelance assassin. And in this role, he has joined the ranks of pretty much every team of supervillains to have ever existed. Sadly, considering DC's Captain Boomerang has recently been adapted into live action for both Suicide Squad movies, it doesn't seem likely that Marvel will be trying out their own Boomerang anytime soon. Let's just get one thing clear here. Yes, this is absolutely a man made of bees. Better known under the pseudonym Swarm, Fritz von Meyer was a Nazi scientist who stumbled across a colony of mutant bees after the end of World War II. Von Meyer attempted and failed to control these bees, who consumed him alive and absorbed him into their hive mind. This not only merged their consciousnesses, but also gave him the ability to control them at will. All of this is explained in Champions Volume 1, Number 15, a story in which Swarm takes on a team of heroes including Angel, Black Widow, Ghost Rider, Hercules, Iceman, and Darkstar. Since then, however, Von Meyer and his bothersome bees have become a stalwart enemy of Spider-Man. More recently, in Ant-Man Volume 2, he has teamed up with Scott Lang to take down the Bug Lords, who are exactly what they sound like. As you might have guessed, Swarm isn't exactly the most serious comic book villain out there. Indeed, his latest stories have been a lot of fun, often leaning into the character's arch silliness. If ever a future Spider-Man movie needed a colorful and amusing secondary antagonist to stir up trouble on the side, Swarm would be just the horrific mass of bees for the job. Jackson Wheel, aka Big Wheel, is one of Spider-Man's weirdest foes. First appearing in 1978's The Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 182, Wheel is a corrupt businessman who hires the villainous engineer known as the Tinkerer to create a massive, deadly monowheel that will help him to defeat his rival, Rocket Racer. Their feud soon brings the big wheel into the path of Spider-Man, sparking a rivalry that would last, well, not very long at all. Wheel actually disappears at the end of the very next issue and has only returned a few times, mostly as a joke character. He has also dabbled in superheroics every now and again, and even his more recent acts of mischief have been half-hearted at best. Big Wheel has yet to turn up in a live-action adaptation of Spider-Man's adventures, which you probably knew already, because who wouldn't have remembered Andrew Garfield fleeing a huge wheel in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Still, it's probably fair to say that this guy needs to join the MCU ASAP. Cast some highly prestigious A-list actor, throw him into battle against Peter Parker, and watch those box office numbers soar. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.